All right, ladies and gentlemen, it is time for yet another fun-filled, thrill, thrill-filled. Is it fun-packed, thrill-filled, thrill-filled, fun-packed? I don't know. Uh, it's going to be a fun one. It's going to be a good one. We're going to talk about Nebraska passing constitutional carry. All they're waiting for is the governor's signature, and he has said he's going to do it. We've got more NRA interviews for you guys, uh, and if you are in the grad program, uh, well, perk up uh, and listen. We're going to be talking about sexy guns. Ooh, sexy guns. And anything else I feel like talking about, because this is my show, and I have a microphone and you don't. So what does that mean? So you will listen to every thing I have to say. Yes, indeed. Right after the music plays. Welcome to Student of the Gun Radio, planting freedom seeds since 2013. Here we don't just talk about guns and gear, we also discuss current events and politics. Because guns are politics. Now, sit back, relax, and allow today's episode to drip ever so gently into your ear. Please welcome your co-hosts, founder of Mastermind Media and Consulting Group, Jared Martin, and the shipping owner, Zach Martin. Now, give it up to your beloved host, the Pimp Hand of America, Professor Paul Markle. Yes, indeed. It is I, and it is Jared, and it is Zachary, and we're all together again in our satellite studios. Jared, did you color code the books on your shelf behind you on purpose or... It's just an accident. I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, uh, you OCD'd them by color, didn't you? You did. Uh, I mean, uh, I organized them by like how a library normally would by category and then author, uh, and then and it just kind of worked out. And then by be. color, yeah. Okay, you gotta. Yeah, maybe so. All right, all right, all right. And for those of you who are are watching your radio right now, you're like, I can't see on the radio. Well, that's okay. That's okay. If you were a part of the student the official student of the gun discord channel, if you were a part of that, you'd be seeing it right now. So there is that. But do they have to pay to get into the discord channel? Jared? Is that a fee driven thing? Uh, no, you just go to student of the gun.com slash discord. You can join there. You get access to a portion of the server for free. You can listen to the public episodes like this one we're doing right now you want access to the grad program stuff you've got to go to get sotg.com and join there hey do we have a review of the week because what we've been doing uh for the last uh, several weeks is uh, we go into the socialist media we go to whether it's uh, well it's not really socialist media we go to the to the podcatcher apps the itunes the iheart radios the spotify you're like you're on spotify yeah, we're it's there, we're right next to Joe Rogan on Spotify. Go look right now; we're right there. Uh, yeah, we're on Spotify and Podcatcher, and and uh, there, there's one. All right, you guys, Zach, you probably know this one. Which Podcatcher is the one that rewards you? Like the more you listen to it, it gives you like little points or stars or whatever. I actually have no idea what the hell. Oh, you have about. no idea? Oh, okay. I didn't know that was a thing. I should get on that one. Yeah, it's a thing. It's if as you when you listen and, and download shows, it gives you it gives you points or credits or it gives you like republic credits or something, and you can apply those towards. I I don't know what is what the French call it, and I don't know what, but uh, yeah, it's the one that your uncle uses. Hey James, are you listening? How you doing? Uh, it's one your uncle uses to listen to the show. So. But regardless, if you go to any of these things, like I said, the iTunes or whatever, and you leave a review, well, you just might be the review of the week. And Jared might read your review live on the radio, and you'll get your 15 seconds of fame. How cool is that? So Jared's going to do that right now at this very moment in time. This is from C Towns 83 on iTunes. It says, great show. I look forward to every new episode. Legacy media is dead. Podcasts are the only way to get news and info nowadays. You are, well, my question to yeah. you, C-Towns83, is do you look forward to the old episodes too? Have you listened to them all already? I don't know if you know this, but you can go back to studentofthegun.com and you can listen to every single episode that has ever aired. Wow. Publicly. That's a lot. You join the grad program, you get access to every single episode we've ever done. And so over 2000 at this point, I believe. So 
yeah, it's a it significant amount. If you have time to kill in your day, or you just want to f- to get make your brain fully loaded, then go to getsotg.com and join yeah. the grad program. Well, if if you are uh, if you are an over the road trucker and you got a lot of time in your hands, or if you're planning yeah, on a, a vacation this this summer and you're going to drive, if you're going to load the family up into the into the family truckster, and yeah, you want your family to get an education, listen to the the public episodes. Uh, if you listen to the the grad program episodes, those are the big boy, big girl. That's that's big boy, big girl hour. That's adult adult episodes. So, if you got five year olds in the car, uh, I would not recommend that. Uh, unless you want them to grow up strong and hard <laughs> and resilient, Have a, a very colorful vocabulary. That's, if you're home, sco- if you're homeschooling them, rock on. And, yeah. That's it. All right, let's go ahead and uh, jump right into the. We did the review of the week. Now we're going to go to the Duracoat finished firearms segment of the week. All right. Uh, thank you to Duracoat Firearm Finishes for sponsoring the, well, this segment. Ha, huh, there you go. All right. Uh, check out Duracoat University. Go to studentofthegun.com slash Duracoat. Yes. So uh, we saw some sexy high points uh, at the uh, at the show, at the NRA annual meeting and exhibits. Uh, Zach took some pictures of them, took some videos, shared them up on the socialist media and so on and so forth. And that's kind of cool, but here's what we want you to do. Here's the opportunity that we are about to throw into your lap. Now, if you guys have been with us for a while, uh, and good on you if you have, we, we did the Sexy Can Contest several years ago. I guess it was in 18, 19, I guess it was 2018. We did the Sexy Can Contest. because And, and the origin of that was, well, the, the suggestion from yours truly that if you'd never done your own Duracoat project and you wanted to practice, but you were worried, you're afraid, you're like, man, I really want to do it, but I don't want to do it on my favorite gun uh, because if I screw it up, then I'll feel really bad. And I said, okay, do an ammo can. Go get an ammo can, a steel ammo can, and do the camouflage pattern or whatever you is. And if you screw up an ammo can, who cares? It's no big deal. Right, so we did that, and you folks out there, you made my projects look like like hot dog turds. Um, you guys mm-hmm. are very creative, uh, and you're very talented. Uh, and I, I, my talent in dirt coating is but a shadow of that which you guys do. So we were joking, kind of, a few weeks ago about uh, well if you've never done one and you want to practice and and so on and so forth I said just go get yourself a high point and get a C9 or a C40 for the love of all this they should be giving those away at this point and it's like here just take it <laughs> just take it uh, you're like what some people still like the f-. yep I know some people do uh, the C45 the 380 the whatever oh uh, and they have we we didn't talk about this, did we? Did we talk? We'll let Dave talk. Dave's going to talk about it in his interview earlier. But they actually have a new carbine, and it, I thought it was a joke because Charlie like fools, not really. Yeah, he put the PR out on April first, and I was like, oh, I see how you are. And it's like, no, actually, I was serious. That was the joke. The joke was I was serious. <laughs> 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 so the joke was you were serious. Okay, but. Uh, yeah, we're working with Duracoat and MKS Supply and High Point, and uh, uh, we're going to do a sexy High Point contest. And this is going to be your opportunity to get one, get some Duracoat, and get creative and post your pictures uh, up on, on the interwebs. And we're going to be giving away some cool prizes. You're like, what are you going to give away, man? Like High Point? So actually what we're going to give away, uh, we just got a commitment from Tactical Response that uh, they're going to donate a two-day training course of your choosing to the winner. Of your choosing? Yeah, of your choosing. So Okay, here's the deal. This is what I think should happen. This what should happen? This is technical official rules. But if you're a cool person, this is what you would do. If you win this two-day training course, you would pick a, a pistol course, and then you would take that 
sexy high point and you would take it through the pistol course. Oh, yeah. If you were hardcore, you would. We were actually, awesome. we were actually thinking this is, uh, how many people are in the Discord right now? Are there Not several? Enough. None? Bye. Invite your friends. No, all right. So uh, if you guys are on the Discord right now, I'm going to throw that out to you. And uh, so I was thinking, I'd be thinking, yeah, me and George Wallace, we'd be thinking uh, about doing a all high point fighting pistol class uh, at Tactical Response, having them host it. And I, I told Joey, I was like, here, if you're looking for plausible deniability, <laughs> <laughs> if you're looking for plausible deniability, we can bring in the pimp hand of America and have him uh, run the course. So that way, your hands are clean. You're like Pontius Pilate. You can. That's funny. You can. Your hands will be clean from that. And he laughed. <laughs> that is a good idea. I don't think you've ever, of all the years that you've known James and his family, I don't think you've ever done a a guest instructor class there. No, I, I didn't. And I told him, I was like, dude, That'd be a cool first. I, I, I just would teach the same thing that you teach. And he goes, it doesn't matter, man. <laughs> like, I know, I know, I know. But, uh, so yeah, uh, I think that's a good idea. And I, I think that this, this is what I'm going to, I'm, I'm hashtagging trademarking TM, uh, TMing this. Uh, if we do an all high point, uh, two day training course, we're going to call it Hater Fest 2023. Yes, baby. It's going to be Hater Fest because you know that once we announce it, people won't be able to leave it alone. They'll either love it or they'll be rolling around on the ground, foaming at the mouth, talking about how they are legion and they are many. <laughs> uh, so there you go. That's coming up. We will have the rules and regulations uh, for the uh, the contest coming up for you very soon, but hey, you know nothing's going to stop you from going and and uh, ordering some some uh, Duracoat right now. And if you want a gun, a used gun, here here's the, the dirty little secret, dude. Is just about every pawn shop and gun shop in America has a used gun section, and they've got a hundred and thirty nine dollar, hundred and nineteen dollar, hundred and twenty two dollar, whatever c9 or whatever over there in the corner uh they i i was at uh, i was actually at brown Hills, and that's i'm going to tell you about that in a second but uh, uh they had a, a used c9 in their used gun display but i couldn't get it you know why i couldn't get it why couldn't i get it because it's a handgun and iowa is not the state in which i reside so i couldn't buy it because America is run by criminals who don't understand the Constitution. But in the meantime, uh, well, I think we I think we already acknowledged uh, we acknowledged that. So uh, if you want to do that, you, we want to buy a new one. And I don't care. Here's the deal: I don't care if it's a carbine. I don't care if it's a pistol. I, I don't care. Just just do it. Uh, and and of course, you're going to have to use a Duracoat product and tell us or several products, if you're going to do camouflage or multicolors or whatever, and uh, tell us what you did. And, of course, Jared, I'm going to give him one more. Can I give him one more? Yes. Okay. Uh, if you do, if, if you have your own setup, like if you're one of these cool guys that has the uh, airbrushes and the compressors and hoses and all that stuff, then it's not a big deal. Uh, you just get a little four-ounce bottle of the color and, and hardener and go crazy. Uh, but if you're going to use the can and can technology, I can tell you this, there's going to be way more Duracoat in that can than you'll need for a pistol. So what you want to do is you want to plan ahead. You're like, okay, I'm going to do the pistol and I'm going to do what else? Do an ammo can, do a knife, do your mailbox, yeah, whatever. Uh, because there's, there's so much, there's enough in a, a can of the can and can that you could do probably two or three pistols. Uh, or a you know a pistol, an ammo can, a knife, a mailbox, whatever. So there you go. All right, we're moving on. We're moving on. Juxy J U X X I. Yes, J U X X I. Juxy dot com. That's where you go. That's where you go. Where you are not beholden to Google or Facebook or youtube or whomever instagram whoever is going to cancel you next week 
because Juxi owns their servers and they own their material and uh, you don't have to worry about waking up tomorrow and your YouTube or your Facebook or your whatever is canceled because you showed a gun or something like that. So get your butts over to J-U-X-X-I, Juxi.com and follow the Student of the Gun channel. It's there. It doesn't cost you anything. Uh, why haven't you done it yet? No excuse. That's what I thought. No excuse. All right, let's move on. Bing, 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 bing. Brownells bullet points brought to you by our good friends at Brownells in Grinnell, Iowa. Please. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, I just screwed up the notes, but that's all right. Zach is going to forgive me. He promises that he'll forgive me. So we went to, uh, we stopped in, uh, go to, going to and coming from the uh, NRA in Indianapolis. We stopped into Grinnell off of exit 182. And going there, it was no problem. We just jumped off the exit and we went there and we visited real quick well we just browsed around the shop real quick we didn't have a lot of time because we were on the road we spent maybe half hour 45 minutes there and that's where i saw the used c9 uh that i couldn't buy then we came back and the lovely ladies and gentlemen in the iowa department of highways or the iowa highway department or whatever they call themselves department of transportation you know what they decided to do jared what they decided to close the westbound exit of Interstate 80 at 182. There you go. They decided you people don't need to go to Grinnell because uh, well, was, Wyoming said they were closed. So yeah, I was a little shocked. Just uh, so what you have to do is you have to go to the next exit. So you have to pat. Well, I don't know. You'll have to check. Check with the. Uh, the Y dot or the I O dot or the I dot or whatever it is, um, and see what's what's what with that. But uh, but if if fear not, fear not. The the town of Grinnell is not hasn't been isolated from the world. You can just go to the next exit and take a right, and then take another right, and then take just so you take a right, and then a right, and then one more right, and then you go down and you, you go all the way down to you get to almost to the highway and take another right, and then you're <laughs> And then you're there. So you just need to like make a big circle and whoop. But it's it can be done. It can be done. And uh, if you are uh, uh, of the mind, you can always go to Brownells and tell them that student of the gun sent you and you get your complimentary cup of coffee and pick up whatever it is that you need. Let them know. That's really the most important thing right now in our day and age because the – the volume of traffic and the the amount of noise on the internet right now is pretty pretty high right can we all agree on that there's a lot of clutter there's a lot of noise and there's a lot of people vying for your attention and whether it's uh Durcoat or Brownells or Crossbreed or whomever it's as important now as ever before to make sure that these people, whether it's on their socialist media or whether it's in person, you probably don't see them a lot in person, uh, to just let them know, hey, I'm here and I'm buying your products because Student of the Gun told me about you and I appreciate you supporting them. Ergo, that's why I'm here. So there you go. All right, uh, Zach, I apologize for stepping on the notes uh, and you can do the attention new listener. So if you're a new listener or an old listener, for that matter, but especially if you're a new listener, pay close attention to what's about to happen. Attention new listeners. We produced a complimentary online training course called Seven Training Tips That Could Save Your Life. Get instant access by joining the Student Lounge for free at studentofthegun.com. Do you watch Student of the Gun TV, read the blog, and follow us on Facebook? If you answered no to any of these questions, you are wrong, but you can easily fix yourself. Go to studentofthegun.com to find everything SOTG. All right, bing, bang, boom. Now, Zach, since I screwed up our notes, we'll go ahead and do the next one right after the homeroom. How's that sound? Does that work for you? That should work just fine for me. All right, Zach says that'll work fine for him. So, And, and he's in charge of the, of the board in the background. You can't see it, but he is. 
All right, so what we're going to do now is we're going to talk about it. we got a Crossbreed Holsters, uh, soon to the gun homeroom, brought to you by Crossbreed Holsters, always. Uh, and as we uh, do this, we want to talk about being dangerous on demand. All right. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Uh, that is Dangerous by Madison Rising. And uh, that's we put that on there because, A, number one, Madison Rising gave us express written permission to use their material in our audio broadcast. YouTube, you scumbags. Uh, and also, we did that because it's the song is called Dangerous. And this segment is all about being dangerous on demand. <laughs> Look at that. Oh, before we get into it, did you guys know that uh, Crossbreed has a new uh, mag carrier called the Confidant? And it is a multi size mm. mag carrier. Uh, it expands and contracts, which means that you can use it for your G Lock magazines or your MP magazines or your High Point magazines or your. Your Beretta M92 magazines or your Canic magazines or whatever. So if you don't, if you didn't know about that, well, now you do. So get your fannies over there and order a couple of those suckers. And hey, Jared, when you check out, when you order something from Crossbreed and you check out, is there a comment section? Like leave it at the back door or something like that? Yeah. You can always add notes or notes. Yeah, so if there's a note section in the order, you might want to say, Student of the Gun sent me. Uh, and, of course, you want to try and use the uh, promo code SOTG when you make a purchase uh, so that they know that you're listening. All right, let's talk about being dangerous on demand. What is going on in the world? Is it Jared, we got some news uh, from the world of Gozer. Nebraska lawmakers pass constitutional carry bill. Yes. The news title says permitless carry, but I hate that because yeah. it's not true. It assumes it that assumes that the default is being permitted. Is, that's right. That's right. And On even Wednesday, town lawmakers hall. in Nebraska passed a bill allowing residents to carry concealed handguns in the state without a permit. Opponents of the bill filibustered for 14 hours over three rounds of debate. The bill was opposed primar- primarily by lawmakers in the areas of Omaha and Lincoln where the majority of gun violence in the state occurs. All right, let's go ahead and pause for a second there. Let's go ahead and pause and examine the story. Uh, Wednesday, lawmakers in Nebraska, and Town Hall is generally a very, a rather conservative, uh, you know, news outlet, would you not say? So it's sad to me that someone who is writing for a supposedly, ostensibly, liberty-based, freedom-based, conservative outlet would use this terminology. Passed a bill allowing residents to carry without a permit. How about lawmakers in Nebraska on Wednesday decided to read the Constitution and understand that it means what it says and it says what it means. And that when you talked to the one million moms against gun control, um, Rebecca and Mary and Melissa, did they bring up anything in relation to how they're um, promoting the use of constitutional carry? Uh, not constitutional carry specifically. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't get to talk to them about it, but I had seen on their social media where before they had they didn't. There it seems to be that there's a coordinated effort to use the term constitutional carry nowadays. Mm. which is great and i'm just wondering if that was on purpose or if it just happened on accident or how the you know how did that come about but you guys yeah. didn't get to talk about that did you no well there was we, we had a lot to talk about and and uh, i think we covered a lot of good bases. not enough time but uh, opponents filibuster blah 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 that what that should say is democrats cried and whined and threw themselves on the floor and had a tantrum and says the lawmakers from Omaha and Lincoln, where the majority of gun violence in the state occurs, um, so why would you be against citizens being armed to defend themselves? Do you think that the 
human beings who are committing the gun violence in Omaha and Lincoln are fine, upstanding citizens who are inclined to obey the law? Or do you think it may be the opposite? You see, this is the, this is the psychosis of the Democrat Party. The psychosis how of the, do we, is... How do we get here? How did we get here? Yeah, because I, if I remember correctly, I think that Omaha, I don't know who were the people that were filibustering in mm. opposition here, but I'm pretty sure that Omaha and maybe Lincoln too, they're both represented by, represented by Republican uh, mayors. Oh, well, uh, our, our good friend, uh, who is it? Who is it? Uh, is from Nebraska. That's where Nebraska is in Omaha, where all oh, that media relations company. Yes. All right. You know who I'm talking about. Swanson Russell. Yes. Yeah. Swanson Russell is in, is in Nebraska. And they're like, yeah, there's a flaming Democrat in, I think, Lincoln. I'm not sure. Uh, some flaming Democrat who's like, well, here's the deal. We're dealing with evil people here. And you're like, oh, come on, Paul. Just because they're you're a political opponent doesn't mean they're evil. Um, no, that doesn't necessarily mean it. But in this case, it is. When you want people... When you want the good people of America to be disarmed and you make excuses at the same time for the murderers and felons and gangbangers and rapists and druggies, you're evil, all right? Democrats never met a criminal they didn't make an excuse for. After 9-11, it took about two months for Democrats and their willing cohorts in the media to go on television and in the newspapers and say, what did we do to make this happen? Did we perhaps, and they didn't, never said deserve, but they, they, they wanted to know, what, what could we possibly do differently? Why, why did this happen to us? What, what did we do and what do we do that made this happen to us? And when you ask that question, what you're doing is you're assuming that you should be changing your way of thinking, changing your way of behaving. And that's how the Democrat Party thinks. See, they think and behave as if America is the enemy, as if America is wrong. The Constitution is wrong. Giving people all this freedom, freedom to make mistakes, Freedom to do things that they don't want, that's wrong. You see, people shouldn't have freedom. They should just be told what to do by the smarter people who are in government. We need to understand that. And thinking, you know, the idea that we're going to somehow change these people's minds, that we're going to present them with an intellectually honest and correct and truthful and historically backed argument, and then they'll see that and come is that's a fool's errand because they don't make decisions based on fact or historical precedent or logic or reason. They make decisions based upon emotion and also out of a sense of greed and a desire to it, to gain power for themselves. Because at the end of the day, ladies and gentlemen, the reason they don't want you to be armed is because they need you to be a victim. They need you to be a slave. They need you to get down on your knees and look to them and beg them for, well, for saving. That's what they need. Because if people are actually taking care of their own problems, and this, this goes across the whole spectrum, it's not just about guns. If people are independent and resilient, if they're growing their own food, if they're relying on their neighbors and their communities and not the government, if they're relying on their families and churches and not the government, if they're defending themselves and their homes and their families with their own tools and not looking to the government, then they don't need the government. Then the government doesn't need to be this massive overreaching monster. Maybe if people take care of their own business, 
then they might come to this realization, like, why are we giving trillions of dollars to the government when they never make anything better, and they never will? We don't need them. And see, that, ladies and gentlemen, is the problem for Democrats, socialists, communists, they're all one and the same, is their job in their own mind is to grow their own power, to reduce your freedom and grow their power. And if you realize that you can and should take, well, control of your own environment, take control of your own safety, then you don't need them. And they need you to need them. They need you to be on your knees begging them for help and assistance. And that's why they behave in this way. That's why they throw temper tantrums. That's why they think it's a good idea to take your God-given rights as codified in the Constitution and hold it hostage and ransom it back to you. That's why they think that's a good idea. That's why they use words like permitted and allowed. Jared, what did our dear departed friend James Yeager teach us two decades ago? about the A words. A lot of things. There's two A words. There's allowed and able. And they're not the same. They're not interchangeable. When someone says, oh, I'm not allowed to do that. And you're like, whoa. Are you not allowed? Or are you not able to do that? Because those two words are not interchangeable. They don't mean the same thing. You see... Democrats, communists, liberals, scumbags use the word allowed because that sets them up into a position of authority. Because when you are allowed, that also means that somebody who thinks they're smarter than you can disallow you. That means they have the authority to tell you no. Like, well, what's the big deal if you just get a permit? You know, what's the big deal? Well, the big deal is I shouldn't have to ask anybody for permission. Because if I have to ask you for permission, then it's not right. And you see, those are the kind of intellectual conversations I like to see on the, on the floor of houses. I would like to see a, a conservative, a, a liberty-minded person, whether they're Republican or Democrat. I said whether they're Democrat. They'll never do that because they're not allowed. To stand up and, and say, okay, to my colleagues on the other side of the aisle, what I would like to for you to do is explain to me how a right has to be bought and paid for by the government. How a citizen needs to go to the government and ask for permission to exercise a right. Is that a right? If I have to go to the government and give them money, fingerprints, photographs, get down on my knees and say, Mother, may I? Is that a right or is that a privilege? Do you even understand the difference? You see, they can never answer that question honestly. They have, they'll call you a racist or homophobe or a xenophobe or an extremist. You think people actually should have rights. You're an extremist. So, so long story short is congratulations. Uh, as as this the, uh, the governor of Nebraska has... Uh, uh, said he's, he, he said publicly that he is going to sign this bill and it says what did it say 90 days i uh, i can't remember let me look and see if something like uh it'll it'll become law 90 days after his signature yeah. which i've never been able to figure yes. out why 90 days after he signs why why not probably something now? to give give people time to like if you i could see in a in a in a bill where it requires more resources to enact the thing that's in the bill you have to give a certain period of time to change the systems and for update the, the system for the whatnot. government to prepare to allow yeah. you yeah, that, yeah but in this situation well, i mean it, it it's probably just a standard 90 day thing no matter what the bill is whether it's reducing control or enacting more control right because you think that if you're reducing control it should just go into effect immediately right now well, that, that's like when, when a court, when the court finds a law to be unconstitutional and strikes it down, 
They don't say, oh, yeah, this law, we've we've examined it. We've gone back and forth. This law violates the Constitution of the United States. So it's still valid for 90 days, but after 90 days, it won't be valid anymore. No, that's not how that works. When, when a law is found to be invalid and, vi- and in direct violation of the Constitution, it's no, it, that's Null it. and void. Poof. But anyway, all right, congratulations to Nebraska for becoming state number 27. Uh, 27 in the list. So that means that uh, the constitutional carry states far exceed those that don't. Now, if this country was the way it's supposed to be in 1776, 77, 81, all 50 states would be constitutional carry. But we still have states in uh, America that do not recognize the authority of the Bill of Rights or the Constitution. So we still got to yeah, work on Yeah, but didn't that. you know that it says in there that the 10th Amendment reserves all the, the, the rights to make decisions to the state? <laughs> Yeah, you know, you know that you can. I don't want to open that can of worms, but that was one of the go read it go the read discussions the that I had with yeah with who it's it's um for those of you that are either new or haven't been around or you're just getting into student of the gun and and what we represent um you probably haven't heard this before but maybe you have the tenth amendment it is true it does it it reserves the things that are not already addressed in the constitution it reserves those to the states instead of the federal government yeah. however there are things that are already addressed they're already the addressed so, <laughs> so those things are already there and we already took and care it's of one that. of those things where especially if it's the you know the, the human rights right the rights of humans that are given to us not by the government not by humans they're given to us by a deity by our creator then endowed by our yeah creator. by our creator and you, so those things cannot be taken away or given to you by a piece of paper or, or humans oh that's why democrats hate god so much that's why communists socialists democrats liberals that's why they hate god so much because if you affirm the the existence of a supreme being and a creator that means that your rights come from him from god not from men and you see When you're a socialist, communist, Democrat scumbag, you believe that man's rights come from other men, and therefore other men can take them away anytime they see fit. And that's why they hate God so much. Yes, indeed. All right, it is time for me to shut my mouth and to allow Zachary to tell you guys what's new and what's cooking. Yes. ShopSOTG.com is the perfect place to go if you are a student of the gun. Whether you want to expand your brain, increase your marksmanship, or help keep your family safe. All that, plus the pimp hand brands that you love. ShopSOTG.com has almost anything that an American patriot would want. Education, enlightenment, and entertainment, and we're open 24-7. Check out ShopSOTG.com today and see for yourself. All right, what's new on the store, Zach? Yes, indeed you do. We have something extremely special that is now available on the store, and that is The Four Pillars of Fighting, the book from the late, great James Yeager that we did a book signing for at the NRA AM. Uh, That is now available on shopsotg.com. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. We are proud. We are proud to have those in stock. And so the next time you're placing an order, oh, Zachary. Did you didn't yes. tell everyone what we what have as a special super cool bonus gift for everybody who goes to the physical store. So if you go to our store and you order a physical product. Now if you order a digital product, that's great. We love you. We're glad that you order digital products, but we can't actually Zach can't touch your package if you're uh ordering a digital product. That but, you know of. Yeah, in, in any in any situation where Zach is going to have to touch your package to get it out to you, you're going to get what, Zach? You're going to get a complimentary SOTG Rocks uh, guitar pick. That's right. I can't think of the word. Yes, indeed. We have official Student of the Gun guitar picks. They have our, our icon. Uh, that is the icon. It's the torch with the blue flame and the guns and the, and the circle and, and all that. Uh, that's called our icon. 
and that icon is on the official student of the gun picks. And if you order anything from our store, a physical uh, thing that you're going to need, a uh, that Jack's going to have to touch your package and put it together, uh, you're going to get one of those as just a bonus. So I just want to read a quick ep- excerpt from the Four Pillars of Fighting here. All right, it's, cool. The section title is Living as a Warrior. It says, Your responsibility to be ready for the fight never ends. Always have your gear complete and in order. Check and recheck your equipment. Mastering warfighting knowledge and skills should be your primary concern. Your life and the lives of your teammates depend on it. Being number one in anything means paying a very high price. You have to be more focused, smarter, work harder, and have more desire than anyone else. You must be physically and mentally prepared, trained to win the gunfight, and accomplish the mission. Talk is cheap. Action is everything. Never make the same mistake twice. Take it seriously and be hard on yourself. Strive for perfection. You'll never get there. But we can always do better. Train as hard as realistically as oh, train as hard and realistically as possible. Identify your weak points and tackle them aggressively. Make them your strong points. You cannot be number one without putting in extra hours. For those who want to win, there is never enough time to train. Be a subject matter expert in your field. Strive to be the go-to guy for the right answer which a lot of you guys, and I'll stop there. There's a lot more, but I'll stop there because I wanted to, to discuss this for the student of the gun audience. A lot of you guys find yourselves as the default go-to guy, right? So even if you know your material or even if you don't, you're probably the quote-unquote gun guy in your community. So whether you like it or not, you've been elected to be that person so you can do the best you possibly can for those people coming to you asking for answers. Because you're going to be disseminating information to them that could potentially be used to save their life. So it's up to us, us here as the the hosts and the co-hosts and the producer guy, but also you as the student of the gun audience to be the best you could possibly be at knowing these things and have the knowledge that you need to pass it down to whoever asks you about it. Yeah, you know, people say, there's often would say I, I didn't ask to be a leader. I don't want to be a leader. That's not my decision. Well, th- that is true. You might not want to be, but the fact of the matter is, is uh, just based on your own behavior, people are going to come to you and they're going to seek answers and you owe it to them to give them the best information possible. But some, sometimes the best information possible is I don't know the answer to that question, but let's find out together. You're far better off doing that than making up some kind of BS. Uh, And that's something that you discuss in the instructor development manual. So if you go to shopsotg.com and get this four pillars of fighting and the instructor development manual, you can have both of those conversations in that book. You're going to need a bigger hat because your brain is going to expand so much. (laughs) That's funny. You're going to need to buy a larger hat because your your brain's going to be like, Speaking of hats. Ellie has started making hats out of everything. So she'll grab a a receipt and put it on her head and say, hat. (laughs) That's awesome. That is awesome. And she says, Paga now. She did. She was walking around earlier. Paga? Paga. Oh, oh my goodness. It it just melts my heart. That melts my heart. Would you guys get the happy Paga message? Yeah. Happy. Paca. That's the first time I've heard her say happy. It was when Alex showed me that video. Oh. Uh, uh, there you go. Is that the most beautiful thing you've ever heard in your life? It Paca. is. Paca. That's me. I'm Paca. Voice uh, of an angel. I know it is a voice of an angel. All right. So speaking of voices of angels, you're not going to hear any of those in the, in the next hour. But <laughs> but what we do have is we've got uh, we've got more people, more friends and, and acquaintances and partners and so forth. We got David from MKS Supply slash High Point. And he's going to tell us going to tell us all about the rain. No, he's going to tell us what but what's new. Uh, we got Rachel from Night Vision. If you guys do not have the official student of the gun accurate sights for your Glock 19, 17, 23, 22, 48, 43, X-ray, just keep filling in the blanks. Uh, if you don't, 
if you don't have night vision accurate sights for your g-lock or your shield uh or your m and p or what was it the the what is the check thing the cp what is that that check one check czp 10 c czp 10 c czp 10 c have uh if you don't have it, you can get it. Go to nightvision.com. And uh, one of our oldest friends, not necessarily our oldest, oldest friends, but but one that I've, John and I have known each other for at least 20 years now. Too long. Oh. Uh, and uh, EOTech was one of the original flagship sponsors for Student of the Gun TV back, back in the cable and satellite days. Yes, back when we used to get television via cable or satellite dish. You're like, what? When was that, man? 1952? No, it was only 10 years ago. (laughs) But John from EOTech uh, is going to jump on with us, and he's going to tell us all about what's new and what's going on uh, with uh, with EOTech. And and so pay attention to that. So without further ado, I'm going to turn this over to Zachary. He's going to do his producer magic, and you're going to listen to more interviews from the floor of NRA uh, 2023. All right, freaks and freakettes. Oh, man. Professor Paul has taken over the lead quarters. I've taken over the lead quarters. The Talking Lead Podcast there's is been, now being run by Professor, Professor Paul Markle, Pimp Ham of America. Ladies and gentlemen. That's right. I'm Pimp Hand of America. It wasn't a job I was looking for, but it was a job I accepted because I knew this country needs a slap. And I'm here to give it to him. Right upside the head. That's Waka. awesome. That's awesome. <laughs> yes, indeed. Indeed. We do we do need the we need that. We need it as a shamaka uh, right, man. So what uh, I've got with me, I've got Dave. What's Dave. Up, What's up, Dave? Dave's not here. No, Dave Dave's is here. here. Man. Well, I mean, yeah, I'm here, but no, Dave's not here. Man. Dave. We've got Dave from High Point Firearms, and uh, it is you're you're thinking like, is this? Oh, look at that. That's me. Is, is this sometime <laughs> in the, in the future? Are we in the future right now? I hate you. <laughs> <laughs> both, both of you. <laughs> oh yeah. Inside jokes. Uh, inside jokes. Inside the jokes. Best. Never never gonna die. <laughs> all right, all right. Who remembers the Office? Michael Scott, and and you know that's was, still out. And he says, and he's like, <laughs> and he's like. Uh, Oh, I, I love inside jokes. I'd like to be a part of one someday. Someday, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> inside love, jokes are great. I'd love to be a part of one. I, I'd love to be a part of one someday. <laughs> yeah, that one's never going to go away. Is That's it? the oh, greatest um, character of all time. So oh, absolutely. D- yes, it is. So, Dave, what, what do we have here? What is this black beauty that we have here? What am I holding? I mean, obviously, you look at it, you know, it's a high point carbine. But the real deal is that is our new latest and greatest 30 super carry carbine. That might be the, the most intelligent use of the 30 super carry to, <laughs> to exist <laughs> no. look at the magazine look at the gun all right so <laughs> I, I know i know how you guys are right you around the magazine <laughs> see they build the magazine first and then they design the gun around they overbuild the, the gun killed. around the magazine yes You're the magazine is well protected yes yeah it's not going to go anywhere yes no, so <laughs> um well, all right that's what they. That's what they did with the. Uh, they had the ten millimeter carbine for years. Yeah, twenty eighteen. And, the, and they dropped. said, "All right, yeah. we, we've got the ten millimeter carbine. This is what the magazine looks like." They took the magazine <laughs> and then they built a pistol around around it. that. Yeah, yeah they're like, but I mean, we want it well protected. Yeah, they're like build. They, a, they they protect their magazines better than any other company. They do. So they like build a around this magazine. So all right, the obvious the obvious question it yeah. for you is. Uh, if you've got the carbine and you already have the magazine for it, I know you're not going to redesign the magazine. So you're going to you're going to build a pistol around the magazine. Hmm. You just 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 say that you are. No, I know. That, no, I know. No, I know. No, 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 no. OK. There. He not refuses. He refuses to admit it. Uh, <laughs> but the, so that one has all of the. All of the stuff. It has the re, the shock absorbing recoil it's pad, massive and, recoil and, shock absorbing pad. Yeah, the yep. shock and absorber in, in the uh, thing, and so why? Because you can. Well, obviously that yes, because you can is the simple quickest reason on it. Mm-hmm. But the reality of this, the thirty super carry carbine falls in the same niche as a three eighty carbine, which now time wise I can't recall when we dropped the three eighty carbine. But when we did the 380 carbine, it's because all those pocket 380 pistols were like the hottest thing. Everybody and bought everybody a pocket. Everybody had 380. Everybody. Ammo. 
And so if the shooter who only has that gun as their self-defense thing, and they should have something other than this pocket gun mm -hmm. to run at home, the 380 carbine became the fruition for that. So, you know, a carbine is easier and better to shoot than a handgun. You oh, yeah, you got contact. four points of contact. Yeah. yeah. So the 30 Super falls in that exact same category. You know, you've got Smith and others putting out some of those 30 Super carry handguns. This so carbine falls that same so exact niche. Let, let's go ahead and do a heads up. Uh, the thirty, the thirty super developed 30, was developed by Super Carry. Uh, thanks for asking. So you, that, we have to do that. Okay. So on on student of the gun, when everyone says thirty super, we have to say thanks for asking. Thanks for asking. <laughs> I'm super. Thanks, thanks for, for asking. asking. <laughs> All things considered, oh, I'm doing quite well. So the thirty super. <laughs> Thanks, Thanks, for super. Asking. Thanks for asking. Thanks for asking. It's a very popular round. Uh, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> oh, come on now. But it's uh, new. Come on. So you get you especially got... especially with those Mexican cartel guns, right? Oh, the cartel guys really <laughs> like thirty eight super. super. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, I'm sorry. They like totally thirty eight different. super. Keep yeah. an, keep an eye on that munchkin. Make sure it doesn't disappear. Ah, <laughs> so we have a special guest in the studio. Her name is Ruth, and she is an angel. Oh. Uh, and she's just watching. She always says, "Are you going to go talk to people? <laughs> why? Why are you, you do that a lot? Why? Right? Are you, why are you always talking to people? Because <laughs> that's what I do. <laughs> that's what I hey, do. I'm Paul Markle. Have we met? Also, I'm Mike Meyer with M and M. Meyer with M and M. They make a case. Oh, they make very a nice a case. And yep, we love a case. We've been making a hybrid platform that's a crossover between an AK and FNFAL and AR and a SIG 550. So okay, I'm amalgamated. So, right? That is that is quite a that is quite a child. Yeah. That is quite a baby. I'm yeah, sure. and he just dropped that on us. Just Are you like making that. it in in 100 in the US? Yes. In wow. 30 super. No, <laughs> uh, not yet. It's a 30 caliber, so <laughs> yeah, 762 by 39. You know, what I, uh, getting back to the thirty super. So, you've got you've got the 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 Smith compact gun, right. and then you have the who who's making the the is was it, it is it Wilson or Night Force? No, somebody, Night Force. Yeah, yeah, so you have really a, high end. You have like a four hundred and twenty dollar gun <laughs> and a four thousand and a four thousand yeah. dollar gun and like nothing in between. They're making a thirty super. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, they when they, that was the, one of the first guns to be released in Thirty Super. Was a, show that magazine again. <laughs> so show this right, Thirty what's, Super what's, magazine. What's the MSRP <laughs> on this gun? I think it's three twenty five. Three twenty five MSRP. Yeah. So that means you can go to your dealer and get it for two ninety nine. Yeah. More and how much is the ammo? I have no idea. And where can you get Thirty Super? I, I have no idea. <laughs> you can get, it, you can get it from Federal. Federal's got thirty Federal, super. Federal's got it. Remington has it. Hornady's got a select load in it. Um, Hornady so did. Hornady does too. Yeah. I did not know they yeah. pulled the trigger on. I that. couldn't tell you which one it is, but I've seen the data chart sheet that they. When are you going to do a seven six two but three nine in a high point? I don't think I can fit that in a grip. No. I think you can. That's a beefy grip. I think Dude. you can work. I mean, that's got out. some girth to it, but I don't know if you can fit seven six two by thirty nine in there. That's. I don't know. I think I think your engineers could. I bet I bet Mike could figure it out. I bet yeah. Mike could figure it out for you. He's an engineer. Shrink it down somehow. I mean. <laughs> What? Or turn it, or just angle it a little bit. <laughs> yeah, put it like in a tube-fed magazine. Yeah, okay, yeah. Right. 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 Think us of the box like a P90. You know, right. Just a little different orientation and make yeah, a mechanism just, throw it in. Yeah, right. While you're bull crapping Three around. Three degrees to the left. <laughs> it, it, it may be, uh, the ship may have sailed, but the the real sleeper, people are like, oh, but you don't, you don't understand how the, the 30 Supers are 30 caliber bullet and it goes this fast. And I said, cool story, bro. Um <laughs> You want a super fast thirty caliber bullet? Yeah. Let's go back to when? When did Takarov introduce that? Oh, that 18, was 1898, 1890. 1890s, yeah, early yeah. eighteen. Yeah, it's like Tokarov. Yeah, seven six two by twenty five. Is uh, what I've what I've been saying for years is somebody needs to call that. They need to come out with a gun and call it the seven millimeter auto mag. Won't you should go ahead and trademark that? Right, just go ahead and trademark it. Seven, yeah. seven yeah, millimeter auto mag, and and just you know the th the three hundred whisper was a one hundred percent rip off of the J D Jones or the three hundred blackout. I'm sorry, the yeah. three hundred blackout was a shot for shot complete rip off of J D Jones's three hundred whisper that he did about thirty years ago. Yeah, well, it's his own fault for not marketing it properly. Right? I knew it was old. I didn't it was that old. 30 years to it. Wait, I mean, it, goes, it goes back to the 90s. I Are you familiar? That. You do anything with the 300 blackout, Mike? 
Um, not much. I've been playing around with it, but not uh, nothing on a commercial level. Itself, okay. So. Yeah, I so, mean, why do that when you get the Sim 62 but 3.9, right? right? It gets, ballistically, it's almost the same, actually, and a lot cheaper. So Yeah, yeah. a lot cheaper. And, and, a lot and, readily and for, available. Uh, for us, like, at least for me, is this design challenge was creating, generating firearm that has ammunition available all over the world. So you just have to have options as either going to 9mm or going actually with something that's in every single place on the planet, 7.62 by 39. The one big thing that most of the communists did really well was spreading their ammunition all over the globe yeah, no doubt. and they didn't care about any controls or anything so you can find that ammunition in any place on the planet and that's why i designed the firearms they need to be spreading some that. seven six in my way is what they need to be doing <laughs> well <laughs> to, to, to be honest the nicest thing is actually being able to return it to return it <laughs> i like <laughs> double the accuracy to give it back so. to them yeah. yeah oh no no brother i tell you what there, there may be somewhere an unopened ham can of that that's, that says "Do not open," you know, open it uh, in event of apocalypse. Apocalyptic, yeah, yeah. I've only got, for Paul Markle's I've, hands I've, only. I've right. told, I've told people, I'm like, like close friends. I said, if I ever post a picture of that ammo can cracked open, you know it's going down. Yeah, it's got, it's got a, a duct tape. I've, I've got the can opener duct tape to it, so it doesn't go away, you know? Because you got to have that. Oh, yeah. If you lose well, that, you're screwed. Oh, yeah. You're, yes you, know, well. you know what I did the first time I got one of those, and I didn't have a can opener. I just took a wood chisel and a mallet, and I was like, chick, 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 chick. <laughs> all the around way the top. around the edge. Hey, whatever works. <laughs> do you know what I've seen people do? Concrete. Concrete? Oh, yeah. You, you, you tip it upside and down, you and start you, you just yep. go... What? Yep. So, so till you grind the the, the edge of it out, and yeah. eventually yeah. you can get it and rip it open. Yep. Okay. You, you know that, that that's one. a survival hack if you've got a can. Of, that's somebody of, who of is food. extremely desperate that figured that no out. No doubt. <laughs> well, <laughs> I got it. Takes about about like an hour. Cool. Yeah, done. like that's, that, that's, that's actually a survival mm -hmm. hack. Like if you yep. you find canned food and don't have a can opener, okay, you just I didn't flip know it over and and rub it on concrete. Yeah, you can see it's it, it, because then, this is a fold over right here in every right. single can. So when right. you're actually just scraping the top on that fold, you can actually remove it and the whole thing pulls out. Yeah. Interesting. See, the next time I can't open my beer, <laughs> you guys are you guys are all learning. Yeah, stuff you here. might have a different issue. It's gonna boil lately. Like, yeah. like but at least I'll over. get some of it. Yeah. yeah, that's right. No. So we brought Dave here to talk about high points and yeah. the, the thirty yeah. super. We got great content here. We got AKs and we got high points. I love this. <laughs> so Dave, talk about talk about your new thirty super. Yeah, high no, point. I mean carbine. Just like a 995, we're talking a 16 and a half inch carbine, you know, pistol magazine grip well, uh, threaded half 28, so you can still suppress it. Not that I know if that's real popular with 30 Super, but that's you know, okay. it's I mean, super. I haven't tried just the fact that you can suppress it is right, yeah, right, enough. right. And you know, I love having the option available. Like all of our guns now are coming threaded standard because you can suppress all of them. Because why not? Yeah, you know, if you can do it, you should be able to. Exactly. That's simple. That's actually something that that I was really excited about when you released the uh, this the. Yeet Cannon, mm -hmm. like Yeet Cannon G1, right, with a threaded barrel. Yeah. For those of you guys that don't know, uh, the Yeet Cannon G1 or the or the C9 or whatever, yeah. uh, they they have a fixed barrel. There are very few guns on the market that have fixed barrels, at least handguns or fighting style guns. Yeah. Have fixed yeah. barrels. I mean, uh, uh, at least in like nine millimeters. So your 22s do. Mm -hmm. You know, like your Ruger does and stuff. Which which falls into because they all have that same action of being straight blowback action. Right, straight blowback action. So, you know, with a twenty two can, if you're using if you're using a Ruger, you know, a twenty two forty five or something like that, you don't need any kind of springs or buffers or whatever. Right. You just screw it right on the end of your Ruger and you're and it's fantastic. And uh if if you don't know, you know, if you're shooting a nine a normal nine mil where it's Glock or Sig or whatever, right. mm -hmm. um, or you know, even Yannick, yeah, Yannick, or, or you know, it, you gotta have also known as Canic. some type of a of a <laughs> of a buffer buffer spring yeah, in the can, cup. a booster cup with a it's because it's got to give it has to give, yep. but with carbines you don't want that right. you want that not to be, and with a pistol with a fixed barrel like the like the C nine or the E can G one. You don't need. You actually need to run it without. Yep, you're running. The same so way I just I just had a company on you know, Marco's new uh, company. They're making some 3D printed cans, mm. and they're coming out with a nine millimeter one that you don't need a booster for. It's so light you don't uh, you don't have to have a booster for. That's it. pretty cool. 
Yeah, um, that's very cool. See, uh, and the, the rumor was that you could run uh, Berettas without them. That's what I've always been told. I've tried, and I, I and I don't get hundred. You don't get hundred percent reliability with the Beretta. You, you're better off having the. Because I say Beretta's the only one I knew of otherwise that you could, in theory, in yeah, theory, in theory, you could. Right. But I, but I found from experience that you need it. It, right. It'll run C9. better. It yeah, so that's, that's even within so that G1 C9 threaded, and then mm. going to the new JXP 10 mil handgun again threaded as well. Yep. Same thing again. Are people suppressing 10 mil? I don't know, right. but the options are you can. You're allowed. But if, yeah, but if we want to run non with a booster in it, just right. a fixed barrel adapter. And and that's another reason that a lot of people uh, may not because well, we're sitting we're right across from Silencer <laughs> Central, uh, and that's what people Silencer might not Co. understand. All the silencer companies are right there. That's why pistol suppressors are made, well, besides the need to clean them, is so they can be disassembled. Because if you're putting it on a pistol, you need to have the spring. But if you're putting it on a carbine, you need to take that spring out of there. Otherwise, your carbine is going to beat your freaking suppressor to death. Right. And you definitely don't want that because they're not free. <laughs> <laughs> no, they're not. No, they're not free. So, uh, oh, we got another toy. We got we got a, we got a, a Kalashnikov. Oh, it's so I got an M and M, an M and M Kalashnikov. Thank you, sir. Oh, oh look at that! This so, out. check this out. So continue, Gracias. continue, Conti Paul. All right, so, so uh, this is the M10X. All right, the M10X uses standard Kalashnikov magazines, but it's an actually a design inspiration. It's a crossover between, I would say, a lot of the countries that I was exposed to growing up, uh, which is uh, I spent. I'm originally from Switzerland, spent time in Venezuela, South America. Uh, I was going to say Boston, but... Uh. Yeah, right? <laughs> <laughs> Switzerland, okay. Yeah, I grew up in South America, actually in Venezuela, where they had the influence of the FNFAL. And then later on, when uh, it turned more communist, they got uh, influenced by the AK-47. So you can see the transition of weapon tra platforms all across. And pretty much... This is how this started uh, as a design concept many years ago. And uh, the idea was to create a firearm with half of the parts, modern features that have been actually utilized in most battle-proven rifles worldwide, and making it easier, simpler. So it's an east meets west firearm system. So it has also AR-15 design inspiration, has SIG 550 from Switzerland design inspiration. Mm -hmm. And all the modern stuff that it's currently the latest in the U.S. market and the tactical side, such as M-Lock, QD mounts, suppressible 5.8 by 24 muzzle tread. So it is really a simplified what a Kalashnikov would be nowadays uh, with the global influence all across from different weapons platforms. So Nice. It's, that's it's, it's a beautiful piece of work right there. So it is... Uses standard AK-47 magazines, yeah. But itself, it opens more as an a, like an AR or FN. So you push a button on the back. Oh, look at that! Ah, oh. there you go. Look so at that. Very simple. What we are always bragging about that we have half of the parts of all the aforementioned firearm systems, and uh, double the accuracy in this caliber, and actually half of the recoil. So it's half, double, half. <laughs> Well, then you're taking away people's excuses to not hit the target. <laughs> right. Yeah, that's a sad that's part of it. They're like, oh, yeah, AK, AKs aren't accurate. Yeah, right. And so it's ambidextrous. You can actually use it from left to right, charging handle and everything. And as you can see, very easy to field strip. And yeah. since we're talking about suppressors, uh, you can actually suppress it. And it has gas. various gas settings. Gas set. Nice. And we're producing it all 100% in the U.S., so there is no foreign components on that, it. That reminds, awesome. me of the a, it that's, this reminds me of the ARX-100. Are you familiar with the ARX-100? Yes. Yeah. 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 So it has, as I said, uh, nothing is completely unique. It's just it's kind of an amalgamation exactly. of several different designs, so which is what Kalashnikov did to make the AK-47. Right. Mm -hmm. And what we did was an amalgamation of successful designs nowadays and keep it very simple and easy to produce in the United States. So... So is this still considered an AK? It is sort of an <laughs> I would ultimate say no. hybrid. That's uh, that's what you Inspired can call it. Inspired by yes, exactly. Actually, I just checked with CNN and they said that that's an AR-15. <laughs> uh, yeah, I thought it was AK-15. No, it's an AR-15 style. It's an AR-14. It's, or it's an yeah. AR-47. You know one needs an AK-14. <laughs> right. 
So uh, pop that slip. back in and show me how that works. So in order to put this thing back together, what you do is turn this over, drop the part drop the right bolt. there. The bolt, yeah, that the bolt that's into very, the that's, that reminds me of the FN right there. That, that, right. Yeah. So it has, as I said, a little bit of everything, but in every, all across it's half of the parts. So you saw that was complete field strip on it. Mm. So very simple, easy to change around configuration. You got an AR style selector switch. Right. So also oh, with half of the parts of any of the aforementioned firearms. So very, very simple. And the recoil on this, it feels like a 223. It doesn't have the 30 kick or anything like that. People that shoot this rifle, they're normally coming back to us like, wow, this is a real pleasure to shoot. When we were having open range days and stuff, we, you've got everybody always coming back and they were like, I want to shoot it again. I want to have this experience just because how well this thing is balanced. Well, let's let, let's let's go ahead and, wow. and when we talk, we're talking about recoil. <laughs> let's go ahead and, and do a reality check. Americans <laughs> can be some of the most pusillanimous humans on planet Earth. Yeah. I, I, Paul, what does that mean? Yeah. Uh, what does that word mean? Yeah. Yeah. You know what pusillanimous <laughs> means. Pusil sounds a cross between puke and uh, platypus. Well, did, salami? You, did, you not salami? Grow, did you not grow up watching Bugs Bunny? <laughs> I did watch yeah. Bugs Bunny. Then you know pusillanimous. But you know, I had someone say, well, it's a heavy, the AK is a heavy recoiling gun. I'm like, mm -mm, <laughs> no. Back no. up. Pump the brakes, Jack. Nope. It, it, recoil starts at, at 308. It's like <laughs> that's where it starts. It's just like it, some people say it starts at thirty out six, but it's like bro, twelve year olds in Africa are shooting AKs, <laughs> right? So you you, just, you know like this, yeah. yeah. Right. Like you, you need to open you up a can of man. To increase that you need to, yeah. okay the power. That's what the last thing that I saw when they were shooting. They were putting the side all the way to the. 300 meters. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah because it, and I asked him, what are you doing? And they're like, uh, well, it, it's they're, higher power. Do you think it's a throttle? It's like, oh, they, they honestly, oh, believe it's a throttle. throttle. More power? Oh, yeah. No. Then you put it to 300. It means, and it, it means that the bullet is going to make it to 300. Oh, if it's below, it's that, actually oh less power. God. No, that's a true story, bro. That's great. Talk, that's talk that's to nuts. any GWAT vet. Talk to dudes. Every You pick up a, a battlefield pickup of an AK in right. Iraq. Um, and, and the and the sights are like shoved all the way up, and they're like, "Do these dudes think they were actually going to shoot that far?" No, they don't even know what they're for. They literally oh thought God. that's how you like they don't turn aim. up the, the, turn, the power. It's like turn the volume the on your power stereo up that they on the gun. Up. So they would push them every uh, almost knew that. every battlefield yeah. pickup in oh, Iraq no. or Afghanistan. They're they're shoved, shoved, shoved all, the all the way up. Full power. <laughs> Full right. power, yeah. Because yeah. I was talking to a bro of mine. I'm like, dude, what the F is up with all the KKs? I mean, right. and, and he said, oh, and also, <laughs> you'll never pick one up off the ground that is on semi. <laughs> it's like they don't even know that one ex exists. They, they, don't know they don't know that setting exists. <laughs> they, they, you pick them up off the ground, they're on auto, and the sights are shoved all the way forward. Ask any GWAT vet, like right. a grunt or somebody who's been over there. That's they're hilarious. like, hence, hence the BS reputation of AKs not being accurate persists because of that. Because they're literally yeah. just spraying. Right. Because spraying they are. 300 meters thing. Yeah. yeah. You can dry fire it at wow. thing. It's. Let me see. I take that light out. Boom. <laughs> Boom. That's the M10X. And so, Paul, so, you need one of those in your life. No, I, I do. I do. No, I'm, I'm an AK dude. I love AKs and I love FNs. And, uh, you know, I, I'm actually, uh, I'm trying you to put. You love ARs. You oh, love I, ARs I love ARs too. too. Oh, no, because you're, like. you're like me. You're a gun guy. You, uh, if it yeah. shoots, you like it. I yeah, mean, I like it. I like I'm it. not one particular brand or yeah, hey, right. Right. hey, hey, shipping ogre. How, right. hey, ogre, how long are we for <laughs> this? Because we just go. 20, oh, we're only 22 minutes in. Wow. This is, yeah. We got another one coming up with uh, the girls from Tactical Response. Okay. All right. So, uh, ladies, uh, did we say that we were in the Caltech booth at the NRA oh, annual meeting good. 2023 I don't Indianapolis? Know if you said that or not. Are you sure? Well, I thought you were on the show. You should you know that. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so, Mike, any other features uh, with your rifle that we? That we I mean, this is there is literally black. so <laughs> much on it. There is so much. It, it, it really has I, a lot I, going I on. Like this is one of those that until, yeah. until you actually see it in person, feel it, and and then obviously shoot it. 
where can we go shoot this? Are you going to be set up at a range day coming near us? Sometime? Well, we're going to be uh, coming up. Recoil, uh, Recoil is actually doing their uh, suppressed shoot, which is called uh, CanCon. Can -Con. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're back, and we are on the floor of the NRA Annual Meeting 2023 in Indianapolis, Indiana. Yes, indeed. And I will not comment about Indianapolis. I will save comment. Uh, from my right, your left, we have Rachel. It's Mal Maloney. I almost said Mahoney. A little bit of police uh, <laughs> uh, police academy action there. Mahoney. Uh, Rachel Maloney from Night Fission with an F. That's Night Fission out of Dearborn, Michigan. Correct. All right. We've got Adam Renola from Century Arms. You know him. I'm not going to talk about him. You already know him. He's already been out here. And uh, we have Diana Mueller, uh, who is sponsored by Fioki, but is representing... Uh, we're going to talk about the DC Project the Women DC for Project. Run Rights. Yep. All right. So we'll get right into it. We were talking, we were doing a little bit of off air. Uh, tell us a little bit about the... Uh, let's talk about the the paid protesters. Okay. Well, we don't we don't pay our protesters, so no, no <laughs> so we're at a disadvantage. What, that's, yeah, that's what's happening. So, no, um, the DC Project Women for Gun Rights, and mm -hmm. if you know anything about the uh, advocacy world and the influence world when it comes to political things, uh, Moms Demand Action is a Bloomberg funded group that gets funded about sixty million dollars a year uh, to work against uh, work for gun control and, and really highlighting that female voice and moms of thinking these people that think that gun control is the answer to all of their violence problems when we know that that's a lie it's it's a misinformation whatever you want to call it so the dc project uh you know is total god thing because i didn't have a, a vision of where we're at today uh, but we are definitely finding our niche is a counter visual and counter voice to the mom's demand action we we are the same demographic and we have a different solution and we do have solutions uh, we have uh, people that will, you know, people who have endured tragedy themselves. We have people that have uh, been victims and survivors. Uh, we have moms. Every, you know, the Second Amendment is for everybody, and it is, uh, it should be the glue that holds us together. And it is not a political issue; it's a constitutional issue. Um, and we have to, we have, we all of us have to start working with our friends, our families, our communities, and our legislators to get back to that point. Uh, because right now, being concealed carry, you know, all these people, let, let's say there's 10% of guns running around this building right here that were armed at least 10%. That's probably a pretty low number. Mm -hmm. But nobody, if you walk outside, nobody knows that we're really a gun, that, they ha that we have a gun on us. Concealed carry kind of works to our disadvantage of them seeing my face and saying that, you know, hey, that's a gun owner. Maybe she's, she doesn't look like a, a devil. Uh, like they're being told on mainstream media. So um, that's why the shirt that we have a teal for two a shirt, it's, it says educate, not legislate. And it has some ARs on it. So I think that's why the, the shirt's important. The moms have a red shirt that says moms demand. They have a signature shirt that everybody wears in mass. And then we have a signature shirt that we wear in mass. And uh, just to give that counter counter visual and counter voice. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, what I will say is uh, I believe that the, one of the biggest problems that we run into is our side. It always has been the side that just wants to be left alone. And their side is the side that can't leave you alone. Correct. They can't function. They can't survive. They can't move about their day just leaving other people alone. Correct. They, you, you have to. It's whether it's if you, if you look at the various social issues, whether it's smoking or whether it's you know, fill in the blank. Uh, you have to agree with them. And if you don't, they're going to force you to agree with them. You know, the, the abortion thing or the transgender thing, which is freaking COVID. lunacy or yeah. the, yeah, or, or the mask thing. Yeah. We all saw that. It's like, well, okay. If you think wearing a mask is going to save you from the China flu, then wear your mask. No, it's not good enough. You have to be forced to do it. Or you hate kids. Yeah. Or you hate your grandparents <laughs> or, or whatever, you know, that, that, and I was you know, talking to my youngest son, and he said, well, you know, they, they, why can't they just make a, an, an, a legitimate argument? Well, they never, if, if you've been paying attention to the world, they can never make a legitimate argument. You, know, you say, you know, we want to protect the children. You know, like, one, if one child's life is saved, then it's worth it. Okay, cool. So that you are against abortion. I'm like, I never said that. It's like, well, 
well, what are you killing inside that womb there? It's not a puppy. So yeah, if, if they if we used a gun to do that, would you pose it then? <clears throat> yeah, but, it's like we should you know just add abortion clients that so you start using AR-15s and, and they're like, oh, what are we going to do here? Well, but, well, one of the things that sorry to but, but no, go ahead. Uh, go. One of the things that I keep telling everybody is that you know we have to educate ourselves on there, there's a choir that doesn't know the words to the song. You know, we're humming along, we want to sing, we want to be in the choir, but we're really not putting forth the effort to um, learn the words of the song. So why do you oppose universal background checks? Why do you oppose red flag laws? If you can't, if you can't articulate that in 10 seconds, you've lost that influential moment with your friends, your families, and your communities. And if anybody needs help with that, go to dcproject.info. We have on our landing page a one-page free document you can download, and it, it goes over those, all those hot topics. So that's, uh, and then this, this weekend on Friday, we actually did a march. We did mm-hmm. our own march um, to create that same visual like you saw in Tennessee. Uh, we did our march to the Capitol. It was only two blocks away. Um, we, we, we tried chanting. Our, ch- our side doesn't chant well, but we, we gave it a good old college try. And we showed up with signs and, and that same kind of visual. So, and then we have a press conference and talking about why we support it uh, as our demographic, our female voice, why we support the Second Amendment, and why, um, what our solutions are. Well, I think the one question that we can ask, whether it's you, me, and anyone in, on our side, is what is it, and we need to ask ourselves this, is was it, what is it about their agenda that requires us to be disarmed. What is it about their agenda? China. Yeah, what is it about their <laughs> agenda that requires us to be disarmed? Because that's all that this word nonsense about it's gun control or reasonable restrictions or whatever. No, let's just call it what it is. It's civilian disarmament. So what is it about their agenda that requires us to be disarmed? Well, they don't think that, they don't see that far down the field. All they know is that kids are dying and then I'm being told that if I take this AR-15 which kills less than hands and fists annually um, if they if if I do this then it'll it'll alleviate that problem it's a lie we all know it's a lie but they have the media they have the Hollywood they have everybody all the influencers so that's why it's important for us we the people to uh, be able to articulate our position well what I would also say to people whether it's you know my friends family or whatever and they'd say Democracy is a lie, and, and that sounds communistic, but it's not communistic. The United States of America is not a democracy. Public. It's not a democracy because we have liberty, individual liberty. In a democracy, if 51% of the people vote to take away all of the rights of the other 49%, then the other 49% lose all their rights. And our founders knew that. They understood that. And so the answer is, you really need to embrace the idea that you don't have to be liked part of the majority you don't have it, it, it doesn't matter how many they say oh and you know they lie they're like oh no, 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 no. this many people support gun control no they don't you're a liar you want to know how i know you're a liar let's look at the next background checks let's look at the record breaking background checks over the last five years more what that tells you is the american people want guns the american government wants them to be disarmed because if the american the american people vote with their money okay all these you claim all oh, the majority of americans want reasonable restrictions on gun control blah, 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 blah. it's like then why are they out there buying guns in record numbers i live in new york why why were all the gun stores in new york empty in 2020 yeah but i thought that state didn't like guns <laughs> Well, and it's going to, you know, I know you had Rebecca Schmoey on here earlier, and it's going to do, it, it takes the action of, of uh, we the people to get involved. You've seen it in the school boards. You know, COVID was kind of a blessing to, to expose what they're doing within our school systems. But when it comes to the Second Amendment, that's my lane. And I'm like, we're going to have to take control, whether it be at the school board level uh, and influencing and educating our children on how to safely and responsibly handle firearms, or if it's at a, you know, city level, a state level we're going to have to step into that. And Rebecca did it. I'm so proud of her because she never, she, she doesn't have any special training. 
Um, I keep, I keep, you know, people keep asking me, and I'm like, you, no, <laughs> I'm way too, no, can't do it, <laughs> not yet. <laughs> Maybe God will put that well, on my heart if, later. If you got a, I know you got a jet, and, yep. I, and of course, time, thank you, Diana. thank you guys, I, thanks for letting thank me you very uh, much. Absolutely. kick this off. Have a good day. <clears throat> All right, thank you, to Diana Mueller from the DC Project for joining us today. All right, we're going to continue. Uh, Adam, what's up, brother? Do your, do your Century handguns accept night vision sights? So actually, so Canik has, has been working for about a year now yeah. in partnership with night vision. We <laughs> so do we have nothing a lot. to do with their plane ride either. Yeah, no, <laughs> uh, a lot of our, a lot of the uh, the night sights that are found on Canics um, and aftermarket accessories are in conjunction with some of the work that we've done with night vision. So it's been a, it's, it was just kind of fortuitous that we're sitting here together at the same time. And uh, I mean, this actually we even had some conversations accidentally on a plane one time she and i sit next to each other didn't even know who each other were and kind of you know it actually goes into what she was just talking about so for me um there's a lot of people in our industry that kind of steer clear from those kind of conversations they don't you know somebody says on a plane what do you do uh, i'm in the sporting goods industry or you know an outdoor lifestyle kind of thing like that i straight up say out the gate i'm in the firearms industry and you know you'll get that buck sometimes people i'm sorry what what do you mean well what do you sell in fires oh i like shotguns I do AK-47s and, you know, and, and pistols. And why would you need that? And the, the biggest thing that I give is I like to have an open dialogue with people. And I say, you know, it's okay for you not to, at the end of this conversation, if you don't agree with me, that's right. And that's what's so great about this country is you're allowed to, it goes back to what you're talking about, liberty. And I know what you're, you're thinking now. No, are you actually allowed to now? No, you say you're allowed. We are allowed. You know, we say, oh, you're not allowed to. Agree with you can you yeah, can disagree we, with me. We always the, make that concession. The other side is like, no, you <laughs> have you to agree yeah. with me, or I'm going to scream at you and, and call you. Well, a it's racist. their way or the highway. And that's yeah. what that's what I go back to. And I always and I I love when somebody gets so passionate, and including if they're vehemently against me. And what I'll say is I'll just let them talk. And finally, I'll say, you know what's so important? And people have a really tough time arguing this. I say, you have the right to say everything you just said. I might not agree with it. I might adamantly disagree with it but what protects your right to say everything you just said is the second amendment the first amendment hands down is protected it's like in the, in, i love that in yeah. what i would say if, if someone says no that's not true you say that's not true we would have a first amendment without a second we don't need that okay cool go to england and offend someone on twitter well what do you mean Mm -hmm. Do you know in England, if you offend a person on Twitter, you will be arrested? That's not true. Look it up. Power of the power of the Googles. The Google Internet. Yeah. It's on internet.com right there, moron. <laughs> because anything on the internet's true. No, no, it, it's true. Uh, of course, it, if you if you do that in Russia, they'll poison you. Well, there you go. Uh, <laughs> did you guys see that a woman was outside of an abortion clinic? And the, the popo jacked her up in England, and they questioned her, and they asked her if she was praying. And she said, I am praying silently to myself. And they said, you're under arrest because it's illegal to pray in public. They, they in said England? That her, yes. Her praying, her admission that she was standing in front of an abortion clinic praying silently to herself was an admission that she was harassing the abortion clinic patrons and they arrested her there's video of it i just wow. posted it two days ago because she admitted to them that's that something she you was don't hear praying. In it is 19 everywhere in this world it is 1994 or 1984 sorry 1984 yeah. Yeah. yeah it's 1984 but here big brother's watching there. baby but but what we're slipping off the slope no, no, okay. it's fine, man. No, 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 no. We're going to go. on to me about yeah. <laughs> talking about we can clothes all start going and socks. Down that. Listen, as I mentioned before, I live in New York, right? So night fishing, we're based out of Dearborn. Um, we shared a plane ride back to JFK. I'm sure you guys were on your way south. Um, and, you know, so I live in a state that has a lot of uh, kind of attention in the media, Bloomberg based out of there, um, for not being pro 2A. Um, but however, comma, if you look at um, any of our governor races, et cetera, et cetera, the rest of the state, 93% of the landmass is the rest of the state. Mm -hmm. 60 to 70% of our population is in that 7%. So when you fly out of JFK or you fly into JFK, if you take a little picture with your phone out the window, 
that is where everybody makes the decision for the rest of the state, which does not look like that 7% land mass. And the rest of the state, the rest of the state is pro 2A and we're forever screaming that. And people ask us all the time because they know what I do. They know what I do for night fishing. They know what I do on the training side. And they're like, I don't understand how you're still in New York. And our answer to that, when we have our students coming through, when I'm talking about whatever concept we're talking about in a basic course or in a training course, live fire course, it's important no matter what that you show up and you go through that process, however extra layers have been thrown our way, that you show up for your two-way rights in that state because that is the undeniable number to go with the pushback on that. What you just said, for anybody who has quote-unquote reasonable relatives or friends or family members or whatever, right? And they're like, well, you know, the electoral college is really outdated. And I read an article on the Communist News Network broadcast, whatever, about it's outdated. Like, stop. Would you agree that Illinois, say Illinois, New York, California, whatever. You, would you agree that uh, that Cook County runs Illinois? Whoever Cook County decides is going to be the governor, that's what happens in Illinois. Same thing in New York. Whoever Manhattan, the greater boroughs decides, that's going to be the governor. All right, well, yeah. That's why we haven't like Coral College kids, because if it wasn't, okay, if it wasn't for the Electoral College, New York City and California would choose our president every sure. single election cycle. Yeah, and it's it's infuriating for the rest of the people that are there. Um, a lot of the way that the laws are structured, it's not set up. People think that, oh, all of this layers, and again, this is people who are not delving into this, who are not pro-2A, but they think all of the additional stuff that's added on are somehow layers to protect people. What it does is it removes the dialogue around guns being something more conversational, a dialogue around guns, just having a normal volume conversation with someone, helping them be educated on products, helping them understand, hey, what's out there? Hey, I, I like this as a long gun. I prefer. What is this gun know, actually do? Right. It's what not a full auto. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah. So it's, like well, it's fully that semi automatic. Exactly. You know, AK is just about as hot a word as an AR. And then, um, you know, you know, sort of professionally driving it back into to the lane uh, of, of what I do, too, as well. On top of that, where I'm like, hey, you need to upgrade some of the things that that are going on on your pistol there. I'm seeing that this is not going to help you be effective and employ this firearm in a safe and effective manner. If God forbid you're caught in somewhere where you do need to go to gun, right? So we make night sights for that reason, but everything around that conversation doesn't happen if someone's afraid to even offer the fact that they have a gun at that point because they're hi they hide it. Some some people are just hiding it because they're afraid they're going to get dinged over the head they, by someone we, we, in our area. Like, yeah, oh we've got to gun? stop apologizing. You know, and we've got to go stop embracing this reasonableness disease. You know, my, my, believe it or not, my feeling is, is that if people know that I'm a gun person and they don't like that, then they're not going to be my friend. I don't care. Uh, we don't need those. You don't need those people in your life. If you really believe, you know, if, I'm talking to the listeners right now. Uh, if you really believe that if your person at your church or your kid's school or your whatever yoga class found out that you're a gun owner, that they wouldn't like you anymore, wouldn't talk to you anymore or whatever. Ladies and gentlemen, join us at 12 there. p.m. in front of the booth 3935 for Joe Gregory's annual ring of the Freedom Bell. 12 p.m. Okay. Freedom bell ring, baby. Freedom bell. Speaking of freedom, freedom, <laughs> freedom of speech. There freedom it is. Freedom of speech. Right there. Yes. So well, night vision. Yeah, night vision. So tell us a little bit about, right, from product standpoint, uh, you've got an excellent, a fantastic line of sites called the Accurate Sites that were developed by a professional firearms instructor with three decades of I've, experience I've in the field. I've heard of that guy, right? Yes. Yeah. It's yeah. Uh, Phil. Is it Phil? Really? Peter? She's She's going to be doing Peter, that. Yes. Peter John. Michaels. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Everybody listening to Student of the Gun knows that act about four four years ago, 2018. Sweet yeah. Buddha. Buck Henry. Yeah, yeah Buck Henry. Yeah. No, in 2018, I started working with uh, Night Vision. They approached me and they said, if you know, if you were going to design the perfect set of night sights for a Glock 19 or a Glock 17, what would you do and why would you do it? 
And, and I said, well, this is why I would do it because quite frankly, most, not all, but most original stock handgun sites, the front sight's way too low. It's too, it's too shallow. It's too, and what that does, it forces you to lift your muzzle up and people say, yeah, I like my Glock, but the farther away from the target I get, the higher the rounds hit and they, and they start going high. And I'm like, wonder why that is. It could actually be the front height set. So we worked very closely together, the, the folks at Night Vision and I. They sent me different heights of rear and different heights of front. And when we went back and forth, back and forth, we found the perfect solution so that uh, our Glock sights, the 19, 17, whatever, are point of aim, point of impact from five yards to 50 feet. And you say, why is that important? Because I, I was a police officer and I know police officer training. And all police qualifications are between three and five yards and 50 feet or 17 yards. That's where 99% uh, of their shooting takes place. So if you can have, guarantee someone point of aim, point of impact, there's no different in the shift from there to there. You're going to, mm. that's what the, some of the other site companies out there, cops won't embrace them because they say, well, they might be good for fighting, but they're not accurate enough. You know, for me to qual and, and get experts so I can get my raise or bonus or whatever. I'm like, and with the accurate size, so like, bro, it day or night, right? They call it accuraze. Accurate. Accurate. So, yes. And the okay. tagline is absolute accuracy day or night. I made that up. No, I, I did make that up. Yeah. It's absolute accuracy. You get a cut of that? Day you or guys night. using that? He, he does. He does get a cut of he that. Yeah, he should, nice. Well, you should be using that in all of your advertising <laughs> as a absolute accuracy. You gave a set of those sites, yeah, right? Yeah, we gave him one. We yeah, told him not to mess it up. Just the front side. Just get the one. Yeah. 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 Just, just the front. Get what you get. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and for people who don't, and may, you know, I'm sure all of your listeners are, are well aware, but just for the uh, small sliver who may not know, um, our tritium is the best tritium that you can uh, bring into this country. It's Swiss tritium. Um, and so in everything that we have been doing, even though it's 2018 that we started working with you, um, the company itself has been around in its name as Night Fishing for about six or seven years now. And so for what we find, you know, at shows like this is that people are still kind of getting to know us. Mm -hmm. um, but this is not a new game. Our sister company has been inserting tritium for 30 years. If you did a land nav course in the last 30 years, you did it with our compass. It's called the Kamanga company that we have. Um, so that L yeah. L uh, LH3, um, that is our company, Kamanga. Uh, excuse me, that is our NSN for the military. That is our most well-known product from Kamanga. And all of that insertion knowledge we tied into handgun sites. So nothing about the newness of the company should reflect the newness um, of what we're doing. That is an old and well understood process for us. Um, so part of that just means that we also continue to add that much more engineering in it. Um, just like you decided to say, hey, I want to do a little more than a three dot sight. It's a sighting system on a gun. Um, I want to delve into this a little bit more and I want to just accept what we've conventionally had. Let me think about this that much more because we're 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 generally seeing a lot of um, this attitude in, in this kind of sector of like, oh, is that an obstacle? I'll, I'll just overcome it. Right. That's that's how we tend to trend. Mm. We're not generally like, well, I guess we'll give up. And so sometimes we accept things and we just kind of overcome it. And it can mean that we don't touch or investigate some areas on guns for a little while because we overcome it. Um, but I think, you know, things uh, when we're talking about new site pictures, innovative site pictures, really investigating, hey, what's a maybe a better way, an alternative way to get someone to be more accurate, especially in a high stress scenario and investigating options whether it's site picture or it's color. Um, we're also known for having one of the few companies that has a blue ring on our front site. Um, it's a little unusual, but we have these blue ring shooters that are absolute huge fans. So that's of an that. option. That, it's not an all option. of them are that. Yeah, you don't no, have okay. yeah no. that's an option. Yeah, got so I've got a pair of your uh, sights on one of my Glocks. Mm -hmm. uh, what's the compatibility with other pistols? So... Um, with the Accurate line, we have them for Glocks, we have them for CZs, and we are talking about bringing in a new line. We have them um, for the sh all the shields, and too. And we have them for the shields as well. And your front ring colors are, re uh, excuse me, orange, white, There's and five. yellow. Uh, oh, you do have the five all on five. that. Yep. Yep, all five. And so for the rest of the types of manufacturers that we cover, we have 14 and more. 14 additional. And then... Yep. Oh, absolutely. We got Canic. If you go to our website, which is nightfishing.com, you can see that huge list, 
huge list of different okay. manufacturers. So you got a nice carry. variety out there. It's oh yeah, yeah, and absolutely. Most so, of the handguns out and there. And one of the things that we're also trying to do is an ensure that we have these conversations with manufacturers like Canic, which is an incredible gun, guys. I can tell you right now, the ability for someone to go into the shop and pick up an optics installed gun with multiple magazines, mag wells, all of the cool bells and whistles that more educated shooters will sometimes add to the gun afterwards. That is a fantastic solution for people. They love it. You have an incredible trigger in your guns. The Mete. This segment brought to you by <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Superior Firearms. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I love it, but that's the truth. So it's it's fantastic for people to be able to go pick those guns up and have the sights already on the gun. Yep. So um, along with the different types of manufacturers that we offer and the cool alternative and up and coming and different sight pictures that are appealing to people and designed for certain scenarios. We are also working with our industry partners and manufacturers to get them on at the factory as well. Yeah, we so need we to do OEM and because- yeah. We're doing that currently. Yes. Yes. Canic yeah. is actually working with Night Vision yeah. now to do OEM. so that we have OEM products that are already in the box coming with with an accurate yeah. yeah well i mean you see it was, if only i knew a guy that could step it up yes, and help well, us develop I, I, I would because it, oh here we come and i know people, where this is going no all people need to understand is this is it's really simple three dot sites are for amateurs and accurate sites are for professionals and and if you if you are an amateur shooter you want to be an amateur shooter then you just use three dots or maybe you just prefer three dot <laughs> Just because you have no training, maybe you, you have, just prefer that you don't have. You don't have. Or you can really tick him off and do a blacked out rear with yeah. just the front side. <laughs> no, you can, no, dude. All right, I, I, you can we do that. that. That's well. that's fine. That's fine. Uh, actually, you know, there's there actually. If you go to their site, there is is it is it still in the pull down bar? Right, the the science of sight. Uh, uh, I'm, I don't think so at this point, we had to completely revamp our website cause okay. it was time. Um, and we wanted to make sure that we updated everything, um, for our consumers, but, um, I'm sure if you head to nightfishing.com, you can take a look and Google uh, and go in the search bar and you'll be able to locate that. Well, we did, we did produce actually a very thoughtful, intelligent explanation called the science of sight and you're like okay so you did this why just because you're bored or you wanted to do something I new or whatever i know that's in the product yeah, the, the, on the bottom yeah right the science of sight down. it's like why is color important what what is the deal with color mm -hmm. why would you want two dots or instead of Green three or and blue so, or, or yeah whatever so that's be. that's all in there it's all very it's very very well researched and, and mm -hmm. uh, it's an so, intelligent website it so is. do you do you do things other than pistols, do you do shotguns or? So it's a good question. Um, so primarily we ARs. are handgun sites, um, absolutely. And we do have some products for ARs. We have a yes. A2 front sight post. Um, so if you wanted to put a tritium front sight on your A2, um, yeah. and it is just mil spec. So if, it, if it's a mil spec style A2 front sight post, we got you. Nice. Um, if you have the Magpul Ambus Pro, um, the match grade size, so the thinner blade, we have a replacement for that as well. Um, AK? With, uh, we don't currently have something for AK. Come on. Uh, but I will Step tell you, we have had some <laughs> of those conversations. If only we knew AK people. Um, oh. <laughs> so we, um, we have had some early discussions about that. Um, and I will say um, people have been hearing rumblings of this. We are going to make some forays into shotgun. We are so excited about that project. It is uh, yeah. Well on its way. That'll be, that'll be a huge market for you. Yeah, yeah. I am oh, a absolutely. very, very big defensive shotgun shooter. Um, so uh, that's like my You're world. Working with these guys? Uh, I am I am not working with... we need with, to make a connection? I am not directly working with K, uh, Caltech on that um, right out of the box. But okay. I, I will tell you, um, I have a deep, deep affection for defensive shotguns all day, without question. So nice. I, I am... I am Fully the person that it, I'm sure people are tired. Well, let's of make a connection after we get down here. In our office. See, this, that's what this is all about. Yeah. You know what this is? Yeah. Yeah. This it's is, a, this it's is, the teepee. This no, is the temple. Is that the no, temple? this is, is the, the church. The symbol the for this building church. bridges. <laughs> this is a symbol for building bridges. I'm, yeah. I'm perpetually on messing with people's side of things. 
That's what we do here's here. Here's the door. Here's we, the steeple. Yeah. Open the door. Here's we, all the people. I knew I figured out. We're building bridges. We're Did you not play here. that game? You I, am, I am having Get a you excited meltdown. about going to church? <laughs> we're bringing people together. We're building bridges. That's what we do. But yeah, so we, we and you know, we're really excited about that. We continue to do tritium and other things. And people will find on the tool side of um, our website, too, we have our fobs there, which is part of another sister company that we have, Glow Rhino. Uh, but we're really just about that tritium life. Um, across the tritium board. life. All about that tritium life. Mm-hmm. All right, Rachel, Adam, and Lefty. Marty, and Lefty, and Lefty. Thank you very much, and we'll be back from the NRA annual meeting 2023 from the Keltec booth at the Lead Quarters, and I am your host, Paul Markle. All right, we're coming back with one more segment from the NRA annual meeting, Indianapolis, Indiana, 2023, from the Keltec booth. And I am joined by my good friend, Lefty. Howdy. Also known as Marty from Talking Lead. And on my right, your left, John Bailey from EOTech. How's it going? Good to be here. Oh, man, fantastic. John and I have known each other for, what, 37, 45 yeah. years? Yeah. Well, it goes back to 1962, I think, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's not quite that long, but we have known each other in the business for... We were in the war together. For, for a long time. Uh, and talk about, well, you are you were in and out. Yeah. Yeah, you know, in and out. Things have changed. And that's something I want people to know about. You know, in our industry, we like to grab a hold of things. We're like, well, you know, in 1992, Smith & Wesson... Did a burp or did them burp. I'm like, well, okay, but it's not 1992 anymore. You know, let's stick with the NRA. I said, somebody, a wonderful, kind human being from the uh, from the expanded fan base said, why would you go to the NRA? You know, in 1934, they had a chance to stop the, uh, like, it's like, bro, bro, bro. All those people are dead. <laughs> All the people who were in the NRA in 1934 are They're dead. They're gone. They're dead now. Okay. I think some of their legacy passed on though yeah but uh you know tell us about the the kind of the the real quick history of eotech and mm-hmm. how things are different today than they were you know 15 years ago yeah it's uh it's been a roller coaster for sure mostly in a good way but you know we had technology uh in 1996 that nobody ever saw you know there were red dots going back to heck when you and i first met in the 1960s you know and yeah. that hasn't changed uh much at all in a technology standpoint but um, and it wasn't even EOTech at the time, but there was holographic technology that finally uh, was able to turn into something. It's been worked on for, you know, going back to the 50s, but they were never able to put it into anything that's useful other than like your fighter jet uh, heads up display. So in 1990, they finally were able to get components and lasers and all that to uh, such a small size that a gun sight um, seemed to work. So uh, they kicked that off and they didn't have a brand. Um, they had a little bit of acceptance and they got Bushnell to put their name on it. And Bushnell was one of the biggest companies in our industry at that time and still are. Um, but that really kind of gave us the, the drive and, and, you know, the, the eyes on us to, uh, to kind of start growing that product. Um, at the same time, some people came by from the military and they looked at it and said, this would be really, really cool, but it can't be this. It's got to be ruggedized. So we started working on the ruggedized portion of it and EOTech kind of began and we, we started selling to them. Bushnell was selling to the commercial business. And uh, at the same time, you know, the, the assault weapons ban was about to expire and assault weapons were going to kind of be a bigger thing. And, you know, so everything just kind of aligned really well. Um, and we got a contract with the military and that helped give us credibility and it just blossomed from there. So come 2005, 2006, we were doing really, really well and caught the eyes of a big contract manufacturer or contract company, L3 Communications. And uh, our original owners sold us to them. And you would think maybe that's a good thing. And, you know, they infused a lot of money into our business. So that was the good thing. The rest was really horrible. You know, it, uh, they threw bureaucracy and red tape and they didn't know our business. They uh, wouldn't let us market. They wouldn't give us the money to market. Um, so even though we were having the success and we had all the credibility and we had government contracts and we had the commercial business, they were really holding us back. Um, so 
uh, they at one point let me go. You know, I kind of build, I built the whole marketing department. You know, I worked in every department other than finance, I think at some point. Um, so they let me go and they eventually merged with a bigger corporation, Harris, and those two didn't do that <laughs> that well with us. And they finally <laughs> said, you know what, we're getting rid of all the commercial segments in our portfolio. So they ended up selling us in 2020. And we're now owned by uh, two guys that uh, are just awesome. I mean, they, they understand the business. Um, they want to grow. They know it takes money to grow. It takes new products to grow, all of those things. And they're infusing all of that stuff. we got a great management staff. Basically, they said, let's bring all the cool people back from, you know, the, from the EOTech days. And I came back in 2020 and it's just been awesome ever since. we got great products. We've got new night vision. Uh, we got new pistol sights. We're working on a uh, on-gun laser system to kind of go after some of those uh, app peels and D-balls that are out there. So we're really, really flying. We're real happy. I, I am really glad that you brought up the night vision uh, because, and, and congratulations to, for being back. I, Thank it makes you. me very Thank happy. You. Yeah. Because uh, if, if those of you who know, EOTech was with us way back when, when Paul Markle sat down with a yellow note tablet and, and wrote the word student of the gun across the top of it and then started scripting out. This one, it was an idea. This one was an idea. And, and I contacted my it's friend Johnny. I'm like, napkin. I'm going to do a TV show. Yeah. And, uh, and he said, I will help you and I'll support you. And you were there from the very, from the very yeah, beginning. Great times. Very beginning. Uh, and, and we've done lots of stuff with EOTech. You know, I, I, back in the old, you know, dead tree days when we used to kill trees and, and put ink on them and stuff <laughs> right. like that. You know, I, that, that's how long it's been, you know, back since the 90s. But when you say night, night vision, uh, that's relatively, I mean, there, there's the cool guys have been into it, but the average person really isn't so much. And uh, because 10 years ago, it was, well, let's face it, it was priced out of most sure. people's market. Right. You know, when, when uh, who's the guys up in uh, New Hampshire? Um, Insight? Insight. Yeah. When, yeah. In, you know, I, when I first saw back in the beginning of GWAT an Insight handheld thermal imager, they're like, I, I said, how much is this? And they said, well, it, it's going to go for around 50 Right. Thousand fifty thousand right. dollars. Yeah. Yeah. So the average person is probably change. not putting a fifty thousand dollar thermal imager on there again. No. But as time has gone by, and this is the way it always is, you know, red dots, lasers, whatever, the products get better and they become more and more affordable as they're able to do that. And they become smaller. And they become smaller. They do. Yep. The one thing that that I that Jared and I both encountered was hunting hogs in Texas with guys at night because in the summertime when it's hot in Texas, the only time to kill hogs is at night because yep. they won't come out in the day. It's just too hot. They just lay around and then they come out at night. And if you're going to kill them, you have to kill them in the dark. But that's dicey with people who are inexperienced, especially if they're inexperienced with the equipment. Oh, and throw any other game that might be there. I mean, you yeah. got cattle, you got deer, you got all kinds of stuff that if you don't know what you're shooting, yeah, you, know, you get in trouble pretty quick. And and when you you know at night, even if you're you know you have lights on your vehicles or whatever, and you have your normal vision, then you throw up an optic, and your peripheral just shrank dramatically. And 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 people can walk into you know a guy can jump drop down to a knee it's completely dark he throws it up he sees it and his buddy does not know what's going on he walks right in front of him sure. as the gun goes bang that is a dangerous situation and something that we at student of the gun we're obviously all about education and training and so forth and, and making helping people to be the safest and most effective with the equipment they have and and help me out here john do you know of anyone you know our our idea jared and I, we saw that and we, we saw that the, those close call moments were like, whoa. Like in person. Saw in that. person saw that. We're like, this that was dicey and we need to we need to reel it in and we need to make sure that everybody on the team is is tight. Right. Because you can't it's not like regular hunting, you know, and we want people to have to be able to have that experience, but at the same time we want them to A not shoot their friends. Right. So how do we do that? Are you aware of anyone that's doing a night hunting safety program course primer not at all because that's something that we wanted to do uh and and obviously the best way to do that is to partner with somebody who's actually invested in it and and i think if a, a night vision manufacturer were to say hey we want you to buy our products we want you to use them successfully 
effectively. And we also want you, everybody to be safe while they're doing it. Because let's face fact, we just talked about that earlier, is the other side's always waiting for us to slip up. Oh, yeah. And all it's going to take is, you know, somebody to get shot at night for some of their people to scream. And then the legislator's like, oh, we need to change we're gonna have to. Well, you know, no, they're just gonna they're yeah. just gonna have one on the next uh, mass murder. There's all of a sudden there'll be a, a night vision site on right. on I'm there. The next It'll just show up. For... Do you want to know the two best ways to have the most fun you can with your clothes on? Uh, sure. One is strap an EOTech to an AR and get in a helicopter, shoot some hogs. <laughs> yeah. Number two is strap an EOTech to a Caltech KSG. And shoot some combat oh, clays. Oh, 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 yeah. We sent you those pictures, right? Yeah, I saw them. Yeah. Yep. So, yeah so, Jared, people, you should see people's faces when you walk out onto a trap range with a KSG <laughs> with an EOTech on it. And these, these old FUD dudes with like, the brake opens are like, what, yep. the hell? Yep. what are you planning you to do here. with that? Dude, it was so but, awesome. once you, but the great thing with the EOTech radical, once you, once you figure the lead, once you use oh, yeah. the reticle to calculate it's like aid, cheating, it's yeah. over with. It's over with. Yeah. People yeah. were like, you did that for real? Oh, we have video. Yeah. Was, this the, was this the regular size KSG or was this like their super long? It was the, the original one. Regular. It was yeah, the original, original KSG. Yeah. OG, baby. Yeah, that was the OG you KSG. Take, you take that extra long one out there now. And <laughs> well, <laughs> like I take the one. extra long one everywhere with me. <laughs> uh -huh. Uh -huh. Zach, you take Zach everywhere? Uh, <laughs> so, uh, so you've got night vision, and you also have uh, precision optics. You have long-range optics now. Yeah. I, I want to make sure people know that. Yep. So in um, 2016, you know, holographic sight was just still doing really, really well. But we were, and self-admittedly, we were always a one-trick pony. It was just that. I mean, we came out with magnifiers that kind of made it a little bit better for medium range, but you're not going to put an EOTech on if you want to shoot four or 500 yards. You're going to put a scope on there. Right. Uh, so we wanted to come out with uh, magnified scopes. Um, you really can't. There's one or two companies that do it in the States, but you really can't do it that well. So we partnered with a company in Japan and uh, to our specs, our design, our industrial style, we came out with a line of rifle scopes that really kind of support our brand, our quality, you know, uh, all of the, the testing that goes through it. We are we're ridiculous when it comes to testing and, and proving out products. Uh, so yeah, we came out with a one to six, a two to ten, and a three and a half to eighteen the first time, and our one to six just went nuts. And it's because we did it as a first focal plane optic. And usually you don't really have much value in a first focal plane in a one to six. But what's really cool about it is we have our our circle dot or our donut of death that people call it mm -hmm. that's in the holographic site. We put that in our one to six at one x. So when you're shooting one x, you still see that ring. And you see a dot, and it's true one X, and eye relief is great. But the minute you dial that, like a first focal plane reticle, that all kind of expands and gets out of the sight picture, and, and then you have a really detailed crosshair for longer range. That's cool shooting technology, yeah. my friend. So I mean, it was an it was a, just a ridiculously simple idea that nobody's ever done, and it it just went nuts. So we now have it in our newer one to ten uh, in a first focal plane. One uh, to ten. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And we did long range. We have a bench rest uh, optic. We've got a couple of hunting optics. Um, so it's doing really, really well. We're really proud of the line. And yeah, the, the line is voodoo. Voodoo. Yeah. Voodoo. The yep. line is voodoo. V u d u. Yeah, B U D U. B U D U. Is that an acronym for something? It's not. It's kind of funny. People ask us why we called it that. And, um, you know, with product development, there's always products that you have that you try to work on and you just can never really release them. There's either supply issues or just technology doesn't catch up. We were always working on one that just never seemed to get there. And I called it voodoo because there's going to be some voodoo magic to ever get that thing to release. Yeah. Uh, and it never did. But we're like, you know what? We really like the name voodoo. That'd be kind of cool. A little mysterious and ghostish and all that. So A little naughty. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we call it voodoo. That's right. That's well, cool. and, and from what, what I've seen, they're, they're very rugged. They're, they are. They're very rugged objects. Yeah. You know, there's not a whole lot you could do with magnified optics uh, that's different than anybody else. Um, so accuracy and consistency and, and uh, tolerances and precision are really the only things you can focus on. Everybody I talk to that shoots or has looked through a Voodoo, it's really our glass clarity that stands us from everybody else. There's just really no distortion, no colors or anything like that. It's just really, really good glass. And then our, our turrets track really well. So 
we're proud of it. But and, you know, and and you're going to shoot well with them. Well, if John has promised that either himself and he's always invited, or somebody from Eotech is is going to come out to Wyoming, and well, it's it gonna, won't be somebody without me present. Well, there yeah. you go. <laughs> I, I, you know, I'm not trying to, to pin you down. Uh, to come to Wyoming to do our long range because you know in, in Wyoming we stretch it out. I know. Well, we, we stretch it. Out. You had me at a mile. That's yeah. When I first heard that, I'm like, yeah, I have to go there. This, yeah. We, this is well, has to be done. Wyoming folk are riflemen, mm -hmm. and and it, and it got to the point where they they built a berm at one mile, and then the guys are like, this is too easy. Can we put one at one and a half miles? Uh, yeah. And so they're like, well, you see that mountain right there? Yeah. We'll put one. We'll use the mountain as a backstop, and we'll put one up there on the mountain. Now, truth is, there's only about that many, and I'm holding up five figures for the radio audience, uh, cartridges that can reliably right. get to 1.5. But it can be done. It can be done. And we did it last summer. We had uh, we were out at 1.5. And the cool thing is, if you're wearing electronic ear pro mm -hmm. that dial it up, you can, can you the, really? you can hear the ding. Really? It's funny because we were online. We had about, what, about 10, 12 people or mm -hmm. something. And everybody with electronic ear pro, when the shot broke, and it's like, and, and everyone with electronic, it's like, I heard it. No kidding. Yeah. And the people who did, they just had regulars, didn't. But we, yeah, we could hear the, we could hear the ding. Wow. With the electronic. What about protection. two miles? Yeah. With a 22. Yeah. Two miles with a, with a Ruger. There you go. In. No, no. No, no. So Charlie yeah. Melton, you know, Charlie Melton. Mm -hmm. So I went out to Utah with him. When he was trying his, I think at the at, at that time he was going for like a three mile or something like that. But we had set up targets at two miles and you know in, and uh, the gentleman that developed the round, it's the Tejas round, so it's like a modified Chi-Tac mm. uh, that he's developed. And he's got everything from a twenty-two all the way up to you know fifty BMG in this this round that he uses. And we were plinking. At two miles targets with his twenty two. How heavy is that bullet? Uh it's a substantial bullet. I would um, say it had to be pretty heavy. Yeah, yeah, it's just heavy. to stabilize. And and the great well, you were out in the, in the Great Salt Flats. Yeah, we went to the flats. Yeah, the, the Great Salt Flats where you can just see oh, into, to, yeah. to the horizon. You were, you were there and you didn't tell no, me. We were, he told us that was I when you. I was doing yeah. the. When I was oh, so I thought uh, you meant like recently. Four, no, it was like four or five. Years okay, ago. No. you're forgiven. <laughs> You know, but uh, now it, it's good. Uh, you know, we're at seventy three hundred feet above sea level, and you can do things with bullets out there that you sure. just can't do. Yeah, on, at sea level or on the east coast, you know, you just well, you, there's trees you in just, the way. Yeah, well, you, you just don't have anything that's two that miles distance. clear. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's it's just cheating. Really, yeah. it is. It is. Uh, and if you ever want to learn how to dope wind, go mm -hmm. to Wyoming. Yeah. Yeah. Because and that's that's the best way to do it, and, and whether it's whether it's handguns, rifles, shotguns, whatever, the best way people like to read books, and read books is great. People like to watch YouTube videos, and that's eh, whatever. Um, but the fact is, if you really want to have an, an understanding, you just got to do it. You just got to get out there, and you just got to do it. And that's what we encourage people to do. We like it's kind of like climbing up into a helicopter with the neo of the and. and if you kill cogs with, with an EOTech, you know, I, from a helicopter, I, I, should, I should have more experience doing that. We, we went down one time, we were in Texas for another reason. And we went to go visit a guy that does that. And so he took us up, but it was in the summer I and mean, it's all the foliage is up there. So mm -hmm. those hogs are protected and the helicopter doesn't push them out. So didn't have an opportunity, but he got a phone call. He's like, all right, there's one out in the, in the field. So went out, I blasted one. Uh oh, okay. so. I can technically say I did it, but I didn't really do it the way you're supposed to do it. Well, the the great thing about that EOTech optic, and I don't need to blow smoke up John's butt because this is true, is uh, when you're in a helicopter and they start running and you mirror them, you have to lag at the end. That's animal. right. It's almost reverse. It's, feed, it's right? reverse. Yeah. It's, yeah. People like you, you. Normally, if you're in a deer stand and uh, you know it's running, you're like, oh, put it on its nose, press right. the trigger, it'll hit in the okay. in the boiler room. Well, the way it was explained to us by our trainers. Uh, and it was that, look, the helicopter is actually going faster than the animal is. It's your perception. So if you lead, it's the bullet's going to go way out That's in front right. of it. And with an EOTech and with the with the tick marks, the north, south, east, west tick marks, he said, look, put the EOTech tick mark on its butt and press the trigger. 
And he says, it's going to seem weird because yep. you're going to seem like you're holding behind it. He said, but the helicopter is actually going faster than the animal is. And that's the only And once you learn to do that, and once you learn that that de- delicate dance, or when, you know, when it moves around, it, it gives you that heads up. And, of course, it needs to be a heads up because you're wearing an aviation yeah. headset. Right. So you can't get a normal cheek well. You, so what we had was a riser, and you've got your holographic weapon sight. And as you know, Marty, or what I'm sure, is that uh, when it's with the holographic weapon sight, as long as it's zeroed, it doesn't matter where you perceive oh, right. it to be. Your perception. As long as it's on target, it's on, as long as it's on target. Yep. It's on target. So if you don't have a perfect cheek weld, which you're never going to have in a helicopter or a situation like that, it it's okay. It's okay. So we put down hogs and coyotes, mm-hmm. and it was oh so great. So our helicopter driver was amazing. Yeah, he was he, a, he, he was, was retired army, army. army. driver. And, driver. Yeah, dri- yeah flyer, he was, he was, <laughs> Did I say driver? Pilot, yeah. maybe. Yeah, pilot. <laughs> did I say driver? Really? Yeah, you did. <laughs> they do call them drivers, though. Yeah. So, um, pilot, he's an drivers. eagle. He's an eagle driver. Yeah. So he was able to. I don't remember if the foliage was was really bad, like when you were there, but he was able to do something with a helicopter where it was like a. It would kind of like he would flare it. him out. Yeah, he like flare it. And it would go woo woo. And it would Ours make had run. Did you guys have sirens and noises that? Mm-hmm. No. Oh yeah, he did. Ours had uh, sirens. No way. Yeah. He's like, hit the siren. You hit a button, and, and then they, it's like a fire truck, and they start running. Wow, oh. that's well, smart. Ours played the the flight of the Valkyries. Yeah, okay. That's, that's right. Yeah. I mean, that's kind of like a <laughs> man. He took <laughs> us siren. through this river bend. It was like banking off. The, it was so awesome, man. You know, you bring up that reticle. It, it you can learn a lot using those reticles. We were just talking about you know um, duck hunting and stuff like that before in uh, or, or you were talking about skeet and stuff like that but trap. Yeah. you can use that reticle. I, I've always told people that if you if you're you put the circle on their beak like they're pushing the reticle yep. and it's automatically your lead. Yep. Same thing with turkey hunting. You know that ring is essentially your shotgun pattern all the way out as far as you want because that ring is getting bigger and bigger as it goes further out. So you can really if you learn about your reticle uh, simple circle with ticks. You know, you can do a lot with it. Oh, absolutely. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And it is a projected hologram. All right. That is it for our time. John Bailey, thank you very much for I taking the time, the time to be this with us, great, old man. friend. And Marty and Jared and myself. And it looks like, well, that's going to put the cap on the student of the gun portion here at the NRA annual meeting 2023. Thank you very much to my guest and to Talking Lead and to Keltec. And to the city of Indianapolis for not shooting me last night. <laughs> no, they, they there was shot. a lot of shootings, apparently. Yeah, yeah, that's, a lot. yeah that's a, for uh, I'm, I'm glad that I didn't get shot while I was here or had to shoot somebody. So that's always a positive. But you and you're not left yet. Yeah, I haven't There's left yet. So I, 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 don't jinx it. <laughs> all right, ladies time. and gentlemen, remember, you're a beginner once. You're a student for life. All right. I hope you enjoyed those interviews. If you didn't enjoy those interviews, well. I don't know what to tell you. You should. Go somewhere, get better taste, and come back. There you go. Before I let you go, I'm going to remind you that uh, this week on the Student of the Gun University podcast, that's S-O-T-G-U podcast, like, I thought this was that. No, the, the podcast, the Student of the Gun University podcast is what? Single topic, short form, easy to digest, right? So you can knock it out in 10, 15 minutes max. Uh, what it says is what it is. So this week, I'm going to talk about the biofire misfire. What? Yeah, biofire misfire. Uh, Congratulations to them for taking a 10,000-mile journey to miss the point. Uh, And if you'd like to listen to that, uh, just pop over to your favorite podcatcher and check out Student of the Gun University podcast, like I said, once a week. It comes out on Thursdays. And it is short form, single topic, easy to digest. All right. So cat in the hat and that be that Buster rhyme. This is me telling you until we're together again, remember you're a beginner once. You're a student for life. Thanks for staying until the end. Want to water the seeds of freedom we planted together today? Head over to wherever you listen to us and leave a like, rating, or review. It makes a big difference. Have a show topic submission? We would love to hear it. Submit it to info at studentofthegun.com. 
but Delightful Human will get back to you faster than you can finish a one-box workout. Remember to check studentofthegun.com often for new and free content, giveaways, and more. Watch, listen, read.